right now I'm going to pick up some stuff in the tiger shark slicer and last time I did this trip to pick up stuff I picked up some big batteries these batteries here yeah these suckers down here so I've got one there and then one behind that little compartment there and I was hoping that when I got these batteries I would be able to put them on this boat and do the trip as fast in this boat as I did in a much smaller boat so in the smaller boat I got there in three hours and 20 minutes if I recall correctly and right now I'm about 11 minutes into this trip maybe 12 by now I have a little stopwatch up there and uh, I guess I'll see how it goes the nice thing about having the batteries is that I can run full speed the whole way there this is a cargo boat it doesn't go fast uh, but hopefully faster than uh, my last trip so the time to beat is three hours and 20 minutes and the reason this boat is so much more useful than the smaller boat is this boat can hold about five times as much cargo and sometimes I need to carry a lot of stuff I'm going to pick up some packages today not sure how much but with this, with this big a boat I don't have to worry about it whatever it is I'm sure it'll fit got some waves One of the many cool features about this boat is that I can sit up on the roof and I can still reach the steering column so I can sit up here and steer. Just have to make sure I'm, my shadow's not blocking the solar panel there. I've got the panels tipped up to face the sun because the sun is off in that direction over there. Alright, so I'll go back and sit in my chair. Well, I'm past halfway now. I'm not sure how much past halfway. I guess I'll find out when I get there. Right now, I'm at an hour and 46 minutes. And, uh, I kind of want to estimate how much energy I'm using. Uh, I've been keeping an eye on my charge controller, which has kind of a nice readout. It's a Renogy Adventurer, I think it's called. And the readout keeps blinking between the, the current battery voltage and a couple of things I don't care about, like temperature and stuff. And then the, uh, the number of amps coming in from the solar panels. And right now, right now it's about 34 amps coming in from the solar panels and my motor uses 50 amps so that leaves 16 amps coming from the batteries and uh, these batteries are 100 amp hour so 8 amps I, and there, there are two of them so that means 8 amps are coming out of each battery which is a piece of cake for those batteries so yeah they 
they shouldn't feel warm or anything. Yeah, they're not warm at all. Totally great. Those batteries have been amazing, by the way. I drive this boat a lot and really, really good. And sometimes I'm driving in the dark with no no sun at all. So then I'm, I'm sucking 50 amps out of them, putting that into the motor, and uh, they handle it no problem. But anyway, so let's say for the first hour and a half of my trip, yeah, I'm definitely past that, but let's say for the first hour and a half of my trip, um, I was probably averaging about 20 amps coming in from the solar panels because earlier in the day the sun was lower and some clouds and whatever. Um, now, now the amperage is higher, but I, I, I'd estimate a 20 amps coming in. So that leaves 30 amps coming from the batteries to the motor for an hour and a half. So 30 times one and a half is 45. So 45 amp hours for the first well let's say let's say it's a little bit more than that because it's probably gonna I think halfway is a little more than an hour and a half so let's say 50 amp hours for the first half of the trip going in and these are 100 amp hour batteries and I have two of them so that's a total of 200 amp hours and if I've used 50 that means I used about a quarter on the first quarter of my trip because halfway there is you know, a quarter of the, the total round trip. So that's that's pretty good. Now, I don't want to count on the weather conditions remaining the same. So, and I don't have to, so that's nice. Um, now I'm getting more energy from the solar panels. So I'm not gonna use another quarter of my energy getting to town. Maybe I'll use an eighth, which, will, which means I'll, I will have used three eighths of my total leaving five-eighths to get home. But I'm gonna be parked for a few hours and uh, the batteries will be charging then. And hopefully they can get back close to the 200 amp hours total. So they got 100 amp hours here and 100 amp hours behind this little panel, identical batteries. and. Uh, Hopefully that'll be close to charged all the way so that if when I'm going home it gets cloudy and stormy or whatever, I can still run the motor at the speed it's going right now, which is about 50 amps, the whole way. Because I should be able to go one, one way on this trip relatively comfortably in the dark. Um, of course, you know, I've always got the backup pedals. And, uh... I've been pedaling most of the way, just because what else am I going to do, just sit around? Well, right now I'm just sitting around, but I'll, I'll, I'll jump back there and pedal some more, get some exercise, give, me, give myself a little bit more speed. But yeah, everything's, everything's looking good so far. I guess I'll uh, see you in another hour and a half, hour 40 minutes. I don't know, what do we have right now? Hour 51. Yeah, so I guess to I guess to match my three hours and twenty minutes, I've got an hour and a half to go from right now. Well, from a minute ago, whatever. Three forty, almost exactly. All right, so I'm twenty minutes slower in this boat. However, I do have a bunch of barnacles. I still have to get off the bottom of this. So you can see a little bit down here. And, yeah, you know, they're all along the whole thing. If I get all those barnacles cleaned off, I can probably get this down to 320, maybe even faster. Either way, it's going to be pretty close. Yeah, nice work, man. It's pretty good. All right, I better go pick up all this stuff. I hope there's a lot of packages. <laughs> I brought this huge boat and a wheelbarrow. Seriously, half a wheelbarrow of stuff? I definitely did not need to bring the big boat. I could have brought my little one, which goes twice as fast. Whatever though, I needed to test this one anyway. All right, let's get our butts out of here. I did spend kind of a lot of time in town today, hanging out with people, you know, trying, trying to socialize a little more. Um, 
So yeah, it's like three o'clock now. I get my butt home. I'm I'm probably gonna get home just as it's getting dark. So it's a good thing I put headlights on the boat. Should be totally fine. All right, let's go. got a situation here. I just spent two hours fighting the wind and the waves to get to a little little clump of mangroves I could tie up. The wind is coming from that direction so it's pretty calm right here. But you can see you know just over here the water is moving and if you go a quarter mile out the waves are significant. And uh, oh, it's starting to calm down now, at least. And you can see, the camera doesn't usually pick this stuff up very well. But uh, yeah, over here it's nice and clear. That's where I started. And then this storm has been moving this way. And I was way on the other side of this water here, closer to that land over there. But the storm started moving that way, so I came straight across here. And coming straight across here, I made no progress toward home, <laughs> but I didn't get hit by lightning, so, oh yeah, I don't know if you can hear that rumbling, but that's thunder, and now I'm hearing it come from the direction I need to go, ah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chill out here for a little bit. <sighs> Oh, I left over two hours ago. <laughs> I'm only like a quarter of the way home. And now the question is... I'm definitely not getting home before dark. Do I wait and hope the storm passes and then I can go home in calmer weather in a lot of darkness? I do have headlights. Or do I go now and try to get as much daylight as daylight movement as I can I'm not gonna get any solar power it's too cloudy right now I mean it's really overcast but uh, yeah do I try try going now and try to get most of the way home in the light or just wait till it gets dark I'm gonna wait like 10 or 15 minutes it does seem to be calming down it's a lot less windy than it was of course right where I am I'm totally blocked by these but yeah the waves the waves are looking a lot calmer now I mean not the waves like right here but like way further out I don't see white caps like oh I see a couple but I don't see them like I was seeing before all right let me just wait a bit all right survival check I've got some water some snacks not a lot of snacks the thing is if I eat anything I'm gonna drink more water so uh, I think I, I think I won't eat anything because the water is what I'm gonna run out of first <sighs> all right now that the bugs there's these little bugs called chitras that live in the mangroves there they've noticed them here maybe I'll go swimming nice and calm back here <sighs> if I get eaten by a shark Someone can find my boat and be like, what happened here? All right, all right. All right, we're going for it. I hope this isn't bad. Okay, I need to go straight ahead. And it looks like this is the trailing end of the storm, which goes all the way over there. Oh, yeah. A little break. Okay. So I got clear-ish, I mean, brighter skies over here. 
So as long as everything keeps moving this way, I should be okay. Crap, where am I going? Okay, right over, right over there. That's where home is. Ah, I think I'll be all right. I may conserve battery power a little, go a little slower, because I just, I'm not sure how much I've used now, because I was, I just spent like two hours driving sideways, <laughs> fighting against the storm. Okay, uh, yeah. I, I think I still have enough energy to get home though. There's like zero chance I'm gonna get this on camera, but over in that part of the storm over there, which was ahead of me, and it's you know, moved around behind, I kept seeing these really, really good lightning strikes. By good, I mean like really clear, crisp ones. Of course, it's not gonna happen when I have the camera out. It only happened every few minutes. Anyway, all right. Oh my gosh, there was one right there. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm gonna shut up and start pedaling and help out my motor a little bit. Man, I'm really glad I have these batteries in the boat though. You know, funny thing I should mention. Uh, yesterday was Sunday, and normally I do a live every Sunday, like a, you know, a, a video thing. I didn't do one last like yesterday afternoon or evening because I had this kind of sickening feeling about this trip <laughs> and I, I guess I sh maybe should have listened to my uh, my intuition there yeah it would make sense if that was just my whatever brain somehow having a good idea that there was going to be a terrible storm today yeah, like all, all yesterday evening I felt terrible, like really nervous about coming today. And I just, I kept thinking, well that's weird, maybe it's just because I haven't come in a while, or maybe it's because it's the first time I'm testing this boat. I mean, since I changed the roof, I mean obviously I've done lots of trips in this boat, but you know, since I upgraded everything and put the batteries in and switched all kinds of stuff. But... Yeah, I couldn't really explain how how anxious I was about the trip based on any of the stuff that was clear, but yeah, maybe my brain was just like the weather the weather smells it smells like there's gonna be a storm tomorrow, Jamie, don't go. Uh, okay, let me let me shut up and do some that one. Alright. I'm exhausted, but I only left my hiding spot there about ten minutes ago. And I've noticed that I've passed the halfway mark. So I'm not I'm not as bad off as I was thinking I might be. Of course I always I always over overestimate how bad things are. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say always, but I try to over overestimate how bad things are so I can be more prepared than I need to be. Uh, and then, you know, it's always a relief when it's not as bad as it as I was estimating. But uh, yeah, the weather seems to be cooperating now. Uh, I got brightish skies ahead. The wind has died down significantly. The waves are pretty chill. And earlier, the boat was like... I wasn't quite at the point where I, I was in danger of capsizing. However, it was crossing my mind. Like, it, I was definitely thinking about the boat going right over sideways. And I was... I was steering, I was just cranking as hard as I could to the side to steer into the waves, but the wind kept pushing me, so the best I could do was come at the waves at like a 30 degree angle, but it was enough to, you know, kind of, whatever. With a catamaran, if the waves come head on, it's not that bad. If the waves come from the side, though, it's, it gets really crazy. Okay. Hopefully in an hour and a half. Ah, a little over than that. Uh, hopefully in a little while, I'll be home and everything will be good. I'm gonna keep pedaling. <laughs> yep. My motor's not on full speed. So I conserve the energy. Everything looks good.
Alright, I actually have a bit of a tailwind right now, so I'm giving my legs a bit of a break. And, uh, you know, at one point when I was fighting against that storm, I had the, the motor and the rudder turned all the way trying to make a right turn just to keep myself going straight because the wind was pushing me the other way. And I was pedaling like mad just to try to make any progress I could. And it's like, it's like a perfect metaphor for life, you know? Sometimes things happen where you can make good progress and other times things happen where you can't make any progress. You might even be going backwards. But if you always keep pushing somewhere, eventually you, you break through obstacles or circumstances change or whatever and that's how you make progress. You keep pushing even, even when it's not convenient or easy. And then suddenly you get a tailwind and there's a beautiful moon. I only have a few more miles to get home. Ah. <sighs>